Welcome to uh, Black Rock Castle Observatory and in particular First Friday at the Castle. Um, we are delighted today to have uh, Mary Mulvihill, who is a renowned author, correspondent and one of the most uh, respected uh, science correspondents uh, in Ireland. Uh, Mary also does heritage tours and uh, has a number of leaflets and books up here which I'm sure she'd be delighted to, to chat to anyone afterwards uh, about both the books and the, uh, the leaflets. So, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, Mary Wilma. Um, thank you very much, especially for that acclaimed bit. I don't know that I stand up to that, but thank you very much. You're all very welcome. Good evening. How are you? Um, what I want to do, and this is partly because International Women's Day is happening on Tuesday, and it's the 100th anniversary of International Women's Day, is that we thought it'd be nice to look at the lives of some very early Irish women astronomers. And so I'm going to tell you about four women I would love to have met. Four women I would love to have had dinner with. I won't say a pint, because I think they would have been sherry drinkers. <laughs> um, and they were feisty women. They were fighters, they were very determined, very daring, very different in their own ways, because we're talking about people who were born at least 150 years ago, um, when it would have been very unusual to be an astronomer. And they dedicated their lives to astronomy, and one of them even goes on to have a career in television. In the 1920s, quite what you think. Um, and there are creatures on the moon after some of these women as well too. So my four women are, my four sherry drinking dinner part partners are Agnes and Margaret and Annie and Alice. And they have small but important legacies for us in their own right. Um, Agnes is a writer. She's from Skibbereen. And I suppose because I'm a writer as well to identify a little bit with, with Agnes. Um, but Agnes writes one of the most important accounts of astronomy in the 19th century. So a really important legacy. Margaret goes on to work as one of the very early workers in the field that's now called astrophysics. So experimental work. Annie chases solar eclipses around the world. And she becomes an expert in sunspots. And she's given her name to a number of things. And we'll talk about that. And Alice. And I wish I had a better picture of Alice, because Alice has such a really interesting life. And this is the woman who ends up working in television. And the irony is, it's the only picture we have of her. I'm sorry it's so. Um, and they come in pairs. Agnes and Margaret were born in the 1840s. Agnes was born in Skibbereen, just before the famine. And Margaret was born in Dublin, just after the famine. And they are friends. They, are, they end up, all these women end up working in London at the same time. And Agnes and Margaret are friends. They're of similar age, similar background. And Annie and Alice actually go to college together. And end up friends as well too. And they're born in the 1860s and they grew up in Belfast. So another kind of natural pairing as well too. And they must all have got together, the four of them, because they were working in astronomy in London in the 1890s. So I imagine there must have been an evening when these four Irish women got together and must have discussed uh, astronomy. And they were all from well-to-do backgrounds. And if you think about it in those days, if you were going to do astronomy and dedicate your life to it, you have to have some means, some independent means. So they're all from fairly well-to-do backgrounds. So I think they would all have worn taffet of silk at some stage. And we certainly know that they all looked down telescopes at some point in their lives. So they would all have had stars in their eyes. Um, and just a little bit more background in general about them. Agnes and Margaret are both self-taught, self-educated in the 1840s. They don't go to school. Margaret, I think, might have had a little bit of school, but it's very informal. They're taught at home. And Annie and Alice are that new breed of women in the 18th, born in the 1860s, and they get to go to third level education. They go to college. So we're talking about two very uh, different groups of uh, women here. And they become the first professional women astronomers in these islands. And they are computers. They are very early computers. So we're not talking about Dell machines or IBMs. We're talking human computers. Because they did the computations. So a computer is actually a name for a person or for a job originally, rather than a machine. The 
these are two of the very first. Um, and uh, what I want to do uh, is also to dedicate this talk in a way to a woman called Maura Brook, or she would have been Maura Conway here. This is Maura. Um, Coincidentally, was at school with my mother. Do you know the way Ireland can be very small? But Maura was the first professional woman astronomer in Ireland. She was employed at Dunsink in the 1950s. So 